This video is something special. Actually, here on Bonaire, we have a dive site called Something Special. And this is a 3D rendering of one of the moorings that was taken with my iPhone 15 Pro Max in a Dive Volk Sea Touch 4 Max Platinum housing. It's pretty cool, and I've been blown away with what I can do with just one month of practice. But let's rewind a bit and review the journey that got me to this point. DiveVolk gave a presentation on Facebook in September that highlighted several third-party apps and how they were being used in the SeaTouch underwater housing. One of those that piqued my interest was a reef mapping effort by Citizens of the Sea using Polycam, so I downloaded the app and started playing with it. There are several methods to capture and generate a 3D model, but the most appropriate for our purposes were LiDAR and Photo. LiDAR uses a laser to measure distances as the camera moves around objects, and Polycam uses that information to create a geometric map of the object or area. An advantage of LiDAR is that it can be processed on the phone, and it's fast. It only took about a minute to generate this 3D model of our living area. Unfortunately, my early tests didn't come out as well as I was expecting. The curtains are a bit wonky, and even though I walked all around the table lamp, the edges are very rough, to say the least. It might be worthwhile to learn better techniques, as I'm sure the quality could be improved with some coaching. That said, I stopped experimenting with LiDAR once I tried it in the water. Perhaps the lasers are impacted by water refraction or floating particulates, but I floated here for quite a while and Polycam could not even generate an initial geometric map of the objects. Testing Polycam's photo mode on land was much more promising. In photo mode, you move the camera all around your objects as you take pictures. You can do this manually, but I found the auto mode incredibly useful. When it senses the camera has moved enough, it automatically takes the next shot. Photo mode brings with it several considerations. The first is that there is a limit of 2,000 photographs. Polycam mentioned that the limit helps maintain performance of the app, and I will state that it can take 30 minutes or more to generate that number of images, which can be exhausting for a single continuous sweep of an area. But it is something to be aware of. The second is that, unlike LiDAR, the photo method cannot be processed on the iPhone and requires uploading the images to the cloud for processing there. It's simple enough. Just click Upload and Process or Upload Later if you just want to move on to the next scan. The upload and cloud processing can take a while, depending on the number of photos and your connection speed. Our couch model had 236 images. The upload at medium quality took about 6 minutes, and the cloud processing took another 8 minutes. When it's complete, you can view the model directly on your phone, or you can use a laptop to log into the Polycam website, where you can do everything you can do on the phone, but on a much larger screen. For the best results underwater, I found that swimming around an object at three different levels generates pretty good results. The first pass should be low and straight ahead. The second is above at about a 45 degree angle, and the last few passes directly over the top. I also experimented with capturing a larger part of the seafloor by picking an object, circling that, then picking another close by, circling that, and then a third. You can actually see three brighter circles on this map, where I went around the mooring, then the isolated brain coral, and then the cluster of three coral heads. Things get a bit trickier when moving from the shallows to the reef. Coral heads, tube sponges, and gorgonians might be so close together or dense that it is difficult to circle specific objects. It still works nicely from above. The models just lack some of the detail. Even though I've only played around with it for a short time, I do have a few general observations. One is that passing fish don't seem to be an issue. 
Even though they may swim by when one or two of the images are taken, the composite model generated by the Polycam algorithm seems to remove isolated and temporary sea life. Floating schools of fish, however, can cause some issues. They are still enough to make Polycam think there is a static object there, but also move just enough that the algorithm struggles with generating that portion of the model. Check out all of the disembodied fishtails in this rendering. And this one requires another trip to the pier, when, hopefully, there will be fewer fish. The same issue exists with Gorgonians. This was actually a four-foot-tall sea plume in the shallows, moving back and forth with some gentle surge. As you can see, it came out a bit, uh, blocky. Anyway, I will continue to practice and see how things progress. Another thing I want to play with more is Blender, which is a free, open-source application that can manipulate 3D objects. I'm sure that is a gross oversimplification, because it looks like you can do a ton of things with it. But for my limited needs in this context, I have been able to export two overlapping 3D models from Polycam, import them into Blender, and match them up to create an aggregate 3D image. To be sure, the learning curve is steep, but it would be awfully cool to build a 3D map of an entire dive site. Before we end, there are three more points I'd like to mention. The first is that, while Polycam does have a free version, it comes with some limitations. The most important from my standpoint was the five photogrammetry captures overall, and 100 images per capture. So, if you want to do anything more significant, the month-to-month -month cost is $27, and the annual plan is $150. Because of the cost, I also investigated a free app called 3D Scanner App. That too has LiDAR, which worked pretty well on land and not so much underwater. It also has the ability to capture photos. Although the limit is 250, which is more than Polycam's free version, but significantly less than the paid version. Like Polycam, the photos cannot be processed on the phone. But 3D Scanner App has a companion laptop version, which allows for local processing instead of relying on an internet connection to the cloud. And individual models are also exportable and importable into Blender to create larger aggregate models as well. Second, please note that this is certainly not a comprehensive video on any of the apps. Heck, I've only had them for a month, and there is so much more to learn, from the settings, features, and capabilities of each application, to the process and techniques by which I can capture images for the models. That said, I hope this is adequate enough to show off a rather unique activity that can be done with your mobile device underwater, but only in a dive volk housing. Finally, here is our standard disclaimer. We receive no compensation from anyone. We also don't accept free trials or test versions of commercial products, and we don't have affiliate links. We pay for everything to ensure there is a clear line of separation when discussing gear. If we like a product, it's because we like that product. And hey, if you're liking the content, there are three ways to support the channel, all of which are free to you. First, if you're not already a subscriber, you can correct that by hitting the subscribe button. Second, click on the like button. And third, maybe tell us what you liked, ask us a question, or give us a suggestion in the comments below. Regardless of what you do or do not do, we're just glad you stayed with us this far. Thanks! Smiley face.